我们人类的祖先和大猩猩一样，都起源于非洲。为了探索根源，解构现代文明，我们跟着祖先的步伐，走出非洲，先抵达了印度。随即踏上了曾经是美洲最大的国家——印加帝国。一四九二年，三艘悬挂着西班牙王室旗帜的帆船，扬帆出了大西洋。领航者哥伦布。为了是去寻找梦中的东方大国，经过七十个昼夜，终于抵达了陆地。他误以为自己到了目的地印度，于是将这个大陆上的居民叫做 Indians， 就是现今美洲的原住民——印第安人。雨季刚过的清晨，乌鲁邦巴河的激流奔腾于安第斯山谷之间。秘鲁拥有全世界最珍贵的奇观和最神秘的失落文明——印加文明。统治南美大陆的印加帝国，曾经以广袤巍峨的安第斯山脉为根基，在不为旧世界了解的地球另一端。建立了辉煌灿烂的古代文明。我们所要探访的遗迹，深藏在陡峭的群峰之中。它只存活了短短半世纪，却让云雾淹没了四百年。直到一九一一年，一名美国探险家的到访，才让这个失落的印加城市重见天日。马丘皮丘建在安第斯山脉的天然岩山上，这里的海拔高度大约是两千四百公尺，地势非常险要。古代印加人选择在这里筑城，真的是令人惊奇，而且匪夷所思。马丘皮丘的建造年代大约是西元一四四零年，由当时的帝国皇帝帕查库特下令新建。由于印加人没有留下文字记录，至今没有人能确定它的功能究竟为何。但可以确定的是，它绝对是印加帝国的神圣之城。马丘皮丘背后的山的轮廓，就代表着印加人仰望天空的策略。考古学家经过长期研究之后，发现生活在农业社会的印加人相信，太阳、月亮和星辰都是宇宙的主宰，而高山大河就是自然之神。所以马丘皮丘是集合了众神的力量中心，这里是观测日月和祭祀神明最佳的地点。也可以看得出来，印加人对于自然有多么崇敬。在众多神灵之中，太阳是主神，马丘皮丘唯一的神殿就是太阳神殿。而这个巨大的石雕，则是山意石，突出的一角正对着北方。古代印加人精确地计算日晷。在如此高海拔的山峰上建立天空之城，就是为了迎接东方升起的太阳。印加帝国也被称为是太阳帝国。马丘皮丘
，历经五百年岁月，风霜和地震始终屹立不摇。只是当年太阳神照耀的荣光之地，到了现代，却掩盖了光芒。首都利马，在西班牙殖民时期被称为“王者之城”。这片土地曾经孕育了美洲最早人类文明之一的小北史前文明，和前哥伦布时期的印加帝国。几个世纪以来，欧亚非移民大量迁入，互相融合。现代大楼和殖民建筑彼此交错。如今的秘鲁是个多种族的开发中国家，来自世界的资金就和当年的西班牙征服者一样，看准了丰富的矿产和资源。光是利马就聚集了七千家工厂和所有的跨国公司，强劲的经济成长也拉大了这座城市。人与人的差距。拉丁美洲一向被国际视为是贫富差距和收入比最悬殊的地区，像是秘鲁有三千一百万人口，而其中七百万都是穷人，占了百分之二十二点七。可是全国却有超过四成以上的财富都集中在只有百分之一的富人手中。像是这一道坐落在首都利马的围墙，它高三公尺，可是却绵延了长达十公里。这是一九八零年代就建造，当时是为了要防止窃案和犯罪的发生。可是现在却成了一道隔离墙，因为在围墙的另外一侧是全秘鲁最有钱的富豪区，可在墙的这一侧，我现在所处的地方，你可以看到却是一大片破烂的贫民区，一个首都被隔成了两个世界。因此，秘鲁人也称这道墙是“耻辱之墙”，同样面对着太平洋夕照，居住在这道墙的两侧人民，想必是不一样的心情。太阳帝国的子民后裔，难道就此沉沦？位在利马城区的周边山丘，低矮荒凉的平民房舍之间，却出现了不寻常的画面和味道。是秘鲁最知名的厨艺学校帕查库特。帕查库特是印加王朝第九位国王的名字，在印第安语义里面是改变世界的意思。而的确，就是在这位国王在位期间，是印加帝国最辉煌的年代。他不但重建了都城库斯科，他更将当时的部落联盟推向为国家体制，也奠定了日后印加帝国霸业的基础。而现在，这间厨艺学校似乎也肩负了改变世界、翻转贫富的使命。Today we have a Spanish omelette, an English fish and chips, and also we have a Peruvian dish called causa. This is a traditional Peruvian chip. It's a yellow one. It's a customer. 杨一山大是帕查库特厨艺学校的老师，十五年厨师经验，曾在英国米其林星级餐厅服务，现在是秘鲁最知名餐厅的二厨。但每个星期二来到这个穷乡僻壤，教学生们做菜。Alexandra is doing is a causa, is a traditional dish from Lima. Yeah, she's really well. No, she's she's really talented. Pachacute 厨艺学校
，是专为贫穷国中毕业生所开设，学费全免之外，学成之后还能到知名餐厅实习工作。每年都有好几百名青少年来报名，但却只有二十五名可以被录取。学生们全都来自平民家庭，厨艺学校的目的只有一个，就是翻转贫穷。We are natural chef here, where mother have to live to work, so kid need to cook. Tengo la mano, su chorrito. My mission, the mission of all the Teachers here is to for motivate these guys. You know they are very poor guys. You know they they don't have access to many things like other people. 而想出用美食与厨艺改变人生的，正是当今秘鲁最有号召力的人物，有秘鲁厨神之称的阿库里欧。This is my office. Wow, your office here. 轻松穿着，丝毫没架子。Gaston Aculio 虽然只是一个厨师，但他的影响力超过任何一个人。他是秘鲁的一夜传奇。People call you the president in kitchen, right here, because I know your. Father is a politician, and then he he was expecting you to be a politician too, but you become a chef. Yes, I was born in a in a privileged home. My father was a very well-known politician. He always told me, teached me the main idea that I was a privileged kid in a country with a lot of unprivileged kids, with a lot of challenges. His dream was that one day I was going to be a politician like him. 出身政治世家的阿库里欧没有按照参议员父亲的安排当律师，步入政坛，反而是走进厨房。但是他却将秘鲁的传统文化，透过一道道料理，让全世界看见。That we had an heritage of 7,000 years of history. That's our culture in Peru. We discovered that our old engineers designed more than 50% of what the world eats now in our farms. No. All the potatoes and tomatoes and corns and chocolate and beans and and chiles that the world eats now were wild, and our and our engineers redesigned them for agriculture, and then they share it with the world. Day after day, we were putting in our dishes local ingredients. We were taking out some French dishes and putting our vision of Peruvian dishes. Recovering in our in our memory. That was our mission. Our mission was not anymore to represent a foreign culture. Our mission was to represent our culture. Aculio 入选全球前五十大名厨。还在十三国开了四十四间餐厅，拥有三千名员工。来自秘鲁安第斯山脉的马铃薯、藜麦、生鱼，甚至天竺鼠料理，也就透过他的饮食革命，进入了世界级的美食殿堂。In times where nobody knew Peruvian food, my dream was to get in to make practices in Joel Robuchon restaurant, which is one of the most famous. Chefs in the world of France. We have kids from Japan, kids coming from all over Europe, the United States. So I didn't have the chance to get there. The other day I went to have dinner there, and I was really happy because at his menu, the first dish I saw was Peruvian ceviche, which is a huge change from that time, from those times. I came from a very poor family as well, and I couldn't afford to study. If they don't do it in one, maybe they don't have other opportunities. And we knew, of course, that one of the most 
strong forces to make huge changes is with, is with education. 用厨艺教育缩小贫富差距，用饮食文化重塑国家形象。超过八万名的秘鲁青年现在不想踢足球，只想学做菜当厨师。秘鲁食品业也一举提升了百分之八的年成长率。而阿库里欧用食物进行一场革命的 DNA， 或许正源于他的祖先——印加人。What's this? Amalia. Amalia. Rosada. 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 Ah, white rosary. What's this? Native. 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 但很少人知道它的真正起源。两千零六年，有一群科学家开始针对马铃薯做基因排列的研究，然后从三百五十种不同的马铃薯上面做遗传标记，最后确认原来全世界的马铃薯都起源于秘鲁，然后才扩展到整个美洲。十六世纪，随着西班牙人征服了印加帝国，然后传到欧洲，成为欧洲人的主食。而在十八、十九世纪的时候，甚至造成至少有四分之一的欧洲人口增长，也促成了欧洲的城市化。但事实上，马铃薯是在八千年前由印加人从有毒的植物培育、改良出来的。国际马铃薯中心，一九七一年成立，全球都有分支，是世界上研究马铃薯最权威的机构。设在利马的总部，展示了各个品种的马铃薯，也揭开了除了稻米、小麦之外，人类最重要粮食的起源秘密。The potato exists. The domesticated potato in the Andes. Um, exists from ten thousand years ago. Ten thousand years ago. Ten thousand years ago. Yes. And this type of the potato was maybe one of the first domesticated in the altiplane area, about four thousand meters over the sea. Can please. In this room. We maintain our big collection, and we call that this the the most important treasure that the Incas leave for the this generation and in, in next ones. Wow. No, because here we have the the thousands of accession domesticators for Incas and pre Incas. So it's the, a like a potato gene bag. Is the potato gin bag the biggest in the world? Yes, the biggest, the biggest in the world. Here we have about eight thousand, four thousand five hundred accession that are coming from seven Andean countries. For example, one. 国际马铃薯中心的基因库保存了几乎全世界所有的马铃薯品种，也包括人类所吃到的第一颗马铃薯。This is a rounded and red color, similar to fish. Yes. Wow. So that that means that it already exists like ten thousand. Ten thousand. Yes. Uh huh. It's possible. 马铃薯一年产量将近四亿吨，是全球高达十亿人口赖以为生的主食，而这些竟然全源自于一万年前先人的智慧。老鹰之歌是一首秘鲁古老民谣，描述安第斯山脉的印第安人团结抵抗外侮，争取自由，要像神鹰一样翱翔天际。后来被美国乐团改编，流传全世界。如今。
我们也将效仿神鹰，飞越安第斯山脉，追溯人类饮食文明的起源，探访古代印加帝国的发源地——印加圣谷。在山谷中，竟然藏着巨大的同心圆系统，它们是莫拉伊、莫雷梯田。通常我们所见到的梯田都是依山而建，而且一层接一层。但是你现在所看到这个莫拉伊梯田，它却是由十几个独立的圆形组成，而且是非常完美的圆形。为什么印加人他们要把梯田造成圆形的？考古学家现在已经确认，这应该是印加人的天然实验室，因为每一层梯田都会有温差，而从最底层到最高层大约可以差到五到七度，而他们就利用这个温差来实验不同的农作物，就像是马铃薯，来培植新的品种。Each step gonna represent different levels in Peru. For example, the first level we have. Gonna represent the hot climate. The last step gonna represent the coldest weather. Used to improve plenty production of potatoes. They used to join like a mutation, but the potato to get the best quality of potato. Inca empire, the ancient era map, based on Colombia, Peru, is it the strength of Argentina? 幅员辽阔，超过两百万平方公里，但是却缺乏广袤的平原耕地。居住的安第斯山脉平均高度更高达四千公尺，气候极端。为了发展农业，印加人只有不断钻研、改良、耕种技术。Oh, so now how many kinds of potatoes and how many kinds of corn do you have in Peru? In Peru, we have approximately three thousand five hundred. Kinds of potatoes, 100 kinds of corns. The famous one is the white white corn. You know, it's named Inca corn. It's around this size. Wow, so big. So big. 除了马铃薯玉米，印加人也靠着梯田实验室，培育出番茄、辣椒和现在当红的藜麦，共四十多种农作物。印加人不止掌控每一层的温度，更从雨季得来的经验，发展出灌溉取水系统。充足的粮食足以养活帝国全盛时期超过一千万的人口。但印加人的农业创新不止如此。依山而建，散布着数以千计的红白相间方格，犹如一幅大地抽象艺术。马拉斯盐田，无疑是自然与人文最完美的结合。从山谷冒出的泉水，蕴藏丰富的盐分。印加人就在这片棕红色的山坡。开凿出一个个小池子，引泉水注入，水经过日晒，留下了盐粒，就成了印加的工业。数百年来，盐泉源源不绝，印加人就是利用大自然开拓了生机。盐田是印加文明智慧的关键，因为当马铃薯或是其他农作物丰收的时候。他们就可以靠着盐把食物储存起来，然后不用再为粮食而伤脑筋，进而得到更多闲暇的时间，可以思考，可以实验，可以发明，进而创造出伟大的艺术和令人叹为观止的建筑。库斯科位在印加圣谷，海拔三千四百公尺，是古代印加帝国的首都。主广场中间的金色雕像。正是将印第安部落大一统成为帝国的皇帝帕查库特。若从高处俯瞰整座城
，宛如一头匍匐在安第斯山的美洲狮，而当初确实是如此设计。只是，当年的印加宫殿，因为西班牙殖民征服的硝烟，早就被天主教堂所取代。唯一留给现代探索者解读神秘历史的具体见证，就是印加石造遗迹。According to some archaeologists, pipe stone for water. In our houses, we use PVC tubes. In Inca times, they used this kind of PVC. Rocks for water. For water, this is a pipe. This perfect hole is possible to do now today using some technology like laser or diamond point. But in Inca times, we didn't have. What happened in Inca times? This is now a secret. 而在城里的印加石墙上，还有一块切割成十二角的石块，这些都让考古学家们摸不着头绪。而距离库斯科古城约两公里的萨克塞华曼，更是数百颗、好几吨重的巨大石块组合而成。巨石和巨石之间天衣无缝。古代印加神秘功法至今无从考究，却可以证明当年帝国文明的灿烂辉煌。而马丘比丘。更是印加石墙的绝美创作。印加人认为不该削山建城，依山而盖的庙宇和宫殿，全都是就地取材。而这里也是印加人石造建筑的典范，可以看到他们把巨大的花岗岩石经过切割之后，完美工整的排列在这里，而且石块和石块之间。没有任何的水泥来做结合，但是呢，它们中间的缝隙却是连一张纸都插不进去。石块切凿的精密程度，即使在二十一世纪的今天，依旧令人赞叹。但如今的秘鲁却饱受天灾之苦，让贫富差距更加悬殊。Donald Trump, American President of the United States. Welcome from Peru. Carlos is a famous mimicking show artist, best known for mimicking South American presidents. Because of the fact that it is popular in Peru, he has become a leader of the small citizens. From here in Lima, people buy water, water, water. No water, water. No 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 water. Está muy mal. Tres máximas del Imperio Incaico, nuestro Imperio Incaico milenario. Las tres máximas del Imperio Incaico fueron Amazúa, no seas ladrón, Amayuya, no seas mentiroso, y Amaqueya, no seas ocioso. Los políticos de Perú no cumplen con esos tres. Ahí es, es como una semilla. Ya los mayores ya fueron, van a los niños. Con este internet, redes sociales. Volver a sembrar en los niños. 纯白的西班牙式主教堂，典雅雄伟。阿勒基巴，秘鲁第二大城，是 Carlos 的家乡。周围环绕高达八十座火山，土壤肥沃，曾经是印加帝国农产品重要基地。城市的建筑都是用白色火山岩石建造。被称为“白色山城”，也是联合国世界遗产。但在城区之外，火山脚下，同样的白色房舍，但却是一片远离文明的贫瘠景象。Potato. Potato. Fries. Fries. Who likes fries? Onion. Okay. Many people believe that education is the only way to solve poverty. 
。但在这样资源极度缺乏的白色山城，有时候连读书都是一件奢侈的事。但是从世界各地来的年轻职工，每天在秘鲁正统学校教育结束之后，就会在这里教导附近孩子们学习英文，就是希望他们不要因为贫穷而输在起跑点上。Okay. Okay. 这是一间叫做 Hoop 的希望小学，两千零八年由当地青年发起，他们认为知识将是下一代脱贫的工具。因此，借用幼稚园当做教室，但最令我们惊奇的是，这个希望小学的创办人兼校长，竟然是来自台湾的年轻医师李尚儒。I am Teacher Lee。从小就是资优生，一路念到医学院，当上林口长庚医院神经外科医师。李尚儒一直是大家眼中的人生胜利组，但二零一一年，他却脱掉白袍，抛下一切，跑来秘鲁的穷乡僻壤当志工。李医师变成了李老师。为什么会有这个念头，觉得我想要到一个距离台湾这么遥远的南美洲呢？我喜欢多接触人群，自己走进人群里面去接触人群，去把做一个计划，然后带到不同的社区，把自己的医学知识应用在更多的人上。阿拉，恭喜你，圆圆，嗨，恭喜你，好开心。Jenny 和 Jennifer 母女，八年前从临近山区搬到阿雷基巴的火山脚下。而 Jennifer 正是李尚儒一路教导大的孩子。So how old are you right now? How old are you now? Ten. Wow, so from here. 对呀。Jennifer 和妈妈一起生活的平房，就是秘鲁一般平民的住宅。在这里长大的孩子们，通常没有学习英文或是受高等教育的机会。当时二十八岁的李尚儒。不顾家人反对，坚持以全球公共卫生和教育当做人生职志，来到阿雷基巴当志工，一待就待了三年。其实来回都是一样，就是就是做做像这样子的小巴。计划的其他地方，然后呃，不管是住的地方或是办公室，都是在系统性这样。大要多久？呃，四十五分钟左右。四十五分钟，所以你这样坐这种公车，几年？差不多，差不多。是。最苦的时候是，大概像少少于三千块台币啦，就是包一整个月的生活费，包住宿什么的，基本上就是鸡皮一包十块钱，然后我们就买回家，然后你跟一些青菜、红萝卜、洋葱什么的。就是弄一锅卤肉，然后就是这样吃一个礼拜这样。没上路吗？颠颠簸簸的秘鲁生活，没有浇熄台湾青年的热情。李尚儒从创办英文学校到现在，还扩大成社区工位服务，每个月都邀请大医院的医疗团队来义诊。他有一种。勇往直前的精神，只要他认为是对的，他就会非常努力的去做。但有时候外人可能觉得说，这家伙怎么那么固执？理念跟想法，还有现在在做的事情，也是一个我也很认同的一个价值，核心价值。郭敬宏今年二十九岁，成大临床医学研究所硕士，在台湾同样属于高薪高学历一族。十年前认识李尚儒，随即也加入了秘鲁志工行列。看着他们可以把他们从这样子贫困的社区，让他可以很自在地去追求他的梦想，我觉得这反而是他们带给我们最大的感动。呃，他是就是我们二零一二年开办呃高校奖学金的第一个毕业的小朋友。亭亭玉立的 Elizabeth， 今年十七岁，她也是李尚儒的得意门生，更是贫民社区第一个大学生。从十岁吧，现在十七，对啊，差不多啊，十年了
。看当当年那个被你教导的小孩子，然后到现在可以念大学。他考上那瞬间，其实我们真的都还蛮兴奋的，我们真的是真的蛮开心，说啊哇。The little spaghetti. What's your dream in the future? What do you want to do? Doctor. Doctor. Oh, doctor. You want to be a doctor? Okay. You want to be a doctor? So medical. Wow. Because of him. 总共拿了两百棵树苗吧，是二零一二年，还是二零一二年的计划吧？现在所以五年，树都长这么高了。学校旁的绿地，因为当初种下的小树苗，如今长大成荫。阿拉基巴的孩子们，也在李尚儒的细心灌溉下，渐渐成长。就是他们当时他们开开心心可以长大，然后可以学到一些东西，是一种陪伴，其实蛮开心的。那这其实就是我们二零零八年开始以来的学校的位置，这样子。我们常规来的小朋友跟妈妈跟志工人数实在是太多了。所以当初你是在这里教吗？对啊，当初是在这边的。对对，所以现在是就有点。变成有点像荒地这样，我们就是想把它把这边都清掉，然后盖一个大概两到三层楼的学校这样。所以这是户本的梦。对啊。荒废的教室是回忆，也是一个梦想。现在经费不足，李尚儒还在等待圆梦的一刻。其实火山脚下的贫民窟是秘鲁的一个缩影，因为秘鲁有道法令，只要是无主之地，站久了就成了你家。也因此，大批外乡人为了谋生，挤进大城市周边，山坡上、火山旁、地震带都有人居。这次史上最大水灾被冲毁的家园，就是盖在河床上的住宅。Pero damnificados tenemos alrededor de 150 mil personas, mil viviendas. Y de esas 200 mil viviendas, muchas han colapsado, otras están inundadas e inhabitables ahorita. Urban settlements that have grown up without any control have tended to be in 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 locations flooding. They're actually also vulnerable to to earthquakes. In the case of a really strong earthquake event, 70% of Lima. Would be affected because of the geology and and the. Not is legally affected by people living there, but is affected by earth. That sand is falling when the water is falling. We are people who are living there, but is affected by it. If you don't respect nature, nature will respect you. One day, nature will respect you. The weather experts have been warned by the weather. 因为秘鲁现在更是全球气候异常最敏感的地区。Por poner un ejemplo, hemos tenido en la ciudad de Sechura, que está cerca de la costa de Piura, que normalmente su periodo de lluvias acumula 40 milímetros al año. Este año hemos tenido más de 640 milímetros en lo que va todavía del periodo lluvioso que no termina, que termina recién en abril, pero ya acumuló 640. 沙漠变成湖泊。安第斯山脉的冰河也超速融化。在这个曾经缔造美洲最伟大文明的古代帝国，人与自然的关系似乎已经失去平衡。我们即将看到地球上最神秘的奇观，它也是世界上最大的艺术作品，大到必须要在空中才看得到，甚至有些人怀疑这是外星人的杰作。位在秘鲁南部这一片广大干燥荒凉的沙漠上，难以想象会有任何人类遗迹。但是实际飞上高空，蜂鸟、猴子、蜘蛛、安第斯
山的神鹰，山坡上甚至有个像是现代太空人的图形。神秘的图鉴，在两千多年前由纳斯卡人所创造。可以看到，在广大的沙漠当中，竟然有上千种的神秘图案。但是这些图案一定有它的含义，只是到底意义是什么，到现在都还是一个谜。我们就好像进入一个神秘古老的奇幻大地，一个消失的民族，创作了自己根本看不到的创作。一九三九年，经由美国考古学家发现后，这里依然存在着未知与永远解不开的谜。但刻写在大地上的图画，无疑是在向上天传递讯息。而这样敬天的理念，如今也还保留在印加圣谷的农田里。The most common uh, corn in Sacred Valley is the Inca corn on golden corn. It's the big one, the biggest. Since Inca times, people used to choose this specimen of this corn to do chicha, that beverage to cheer with the sun, with the moon, with the god. So I think from Inca times, the uh, people very uh, admire nature and uh, respect of nature, right? Of course, yes. We have one ideology to respect the sacred nature. We call Pachamama. Pachamama means Mother Earth. We will respect the Mother Earth. If you pay attention, this mountain is working together with the human building. It's not destroying this area. The human workers and the mountain are working together. That's respect. The potatoes have uh, enough genes for responding to the climate change. Yeah. Now, like now, because they exist 10,000 years, they have passed several climate change problems. This one, so this one, the bat of the potatoes, uh -huh. that they can tolerate the climate change, especially the drought and the hot temperature and frost. And she will make uh, pieces of the, of the tissues new or the pieces? new pieces. For example, this one, for example, no? <laughs> yeah? The, the, the plant is coming from a, a stem uh -huh. And this stem, are, like the leaves are removed, and the a small pieces of the stem is, is planted here. And oh. this, after two or three weeks, we will get a lot of new plantlets. 马铃薯中心的科学家也仿效着古代印加人，试着将现有四千多种的马铃薯，加上现代科技和知识，培育出更能应应全球不同地区土壤。和气候变迁的超级食物，更将数千种的马铃薯干细胞储存在摄氏零下一百九十度的低温液态氮桶里。You see, there are boxes. Into the boxes, there are small vials that contain tissues of the potato that are able to regrow in the future, maybe 100 years later, or maybe in March, as you said. Yes, it's possible. Now we have about 2,000 varieties. The, the most oldest varieties that I, I, told, I show you coming from the, the 10,000 years before, yeah. yes, they are inside. Wow. Because the responsibility of our institution for uh, conserving in safe way all the diversity of the potato for future generations. Milu has been working with the NASA NASA. 要实验马铃薯在火星上种植的可能性，古代印加人的智慧结晶，毫无疑问的将成为未来人类最安全的粮食来源。The potato is not only food for for Peruvians and Andes; it's the culture inside. My father is from Cusco, from Machu Picchu, from that area. My father, and my mother is from the most. 
traditional Spanish family in the coast of Trujillo in Peru. So at the beginning was a scandal for my, the family of my mother. What is, this is from the guy from the Andes. We don't like the people from the Andes. They remember us to the Incas, we are Spanish, you know? And, but they fall in love and I was born because of that love. For a long time, we resist in Lima the message that um, we need to hide a little bit our Inca heritage. Because we were a colony and we thought that we need to be more, if you are more European, you are nicer. Now it's that so, that, that game is over. We are really proud of our Inca heritage, multicultural, we are really proud, that's our force. 相传十六世纪西班牙远征军第一次踏上库斯科就被以金板铺地金箔市场的太阳神庙惊叹的说不出话来灿烂的黄金帝国最终因为遭受侵略被洗劫一空而永流传说只留下数百吨难以撼动的巨石堡垒屹立五百年却又只能在失落的神殿传说中缅怀顺应自然的生存智慧